What up YouTube, you're with Mr. Scammy, today a little, um, like a little tutorial kind of thing for you. Um, and I've just noticed there are quite a few, or, um, quite a few videos going around of people saying how to build a model airport, and I thought I'd put my input in, um, here because, well, um, there are loads of different ways of doing a model airport, I will go into more depth later on in the video, but there's different ways of doing it, you can get mats, uh, which are preset out layouts, um, you can get normal like pencil pen drawn uh, layouts or the more like the more accurate I would say accurate in a way um, the more well presented way um, which is my way which of course is uh, painted way everything on this board of course apart from the flock the terminals and of course the models and whatever like the GSE um, all self painted well of course except for like, the gateways there um, I painted those and I'll, I'll just say this first of all if you want to paint your Jeremy just gateways just take this into consideration I didn't um, they're not going to be as um, movable as they were before except for example let me just grab one of these obviously the one that's stiff let's get the original one Okay, so I've got two jetways here. Let me move it up. One, two. One on the the bottom one is painted, and it's very. I'm trying to get there. We go. It's very. This one's not so bad because I've sanded it down on the top, um, at the top there. But if I can, I could really do find a one that's really stiff to use. That one's fine. There we go. First one. There's, because I know with some problems I found, it's really, like, you get past the point where you're trying to make subtle adjustments to get into the aircraft, and you have to really force it, and then it just goes too far and it knocks the airport off the center line and whatever. And um, so when you do, if you do paint Jimmy Jets or Herp or whatever, um, they're jetways, just take into consideration, they're, they're not going to be floppy, for example. I'll stick this down all the way down like that and then just flick them it comes open compared to this one yeah it just stays like that they're more they're more solid and hard harder to maneuver and um, when they're painted of course the paint adds an extra layer onto that which would affect the um the actual quality of the jetway yes okay let me just that's just that covered um but everything on this board is painted, of course, as I just said, apart from all the accessories and stuff. Um, and that's, in my opinion, the more realistic way to go because it makes the lines nice and sharp, well, in some places. Um, makes the lines nice and sharp. Um, you can get the exact position. Well, you don't have as much freedom as you would do, um, which, which, you, which as you would with a pen because you can literally just go to the, that line there. Um, and they'll all be different, but... The um, advantage with painting, of course, if it takes longer, but of course, normally, generally, something that takes longer is generally um, better. Um, so yeah, let me crack on. I'm gonna cover. Um, actually, first of all, what I'm gonna cover is research and what kind of airport you want. Um, now, I was in between. I know my UK airport was kind of. Um, the UK airport, I, was, I thought to myself, can I really base this off an airport because I haven't got enough aircraft and airlines for Heathrow. Um, I haven't got as much variety as Heathrow and it's not big enough to cover Heathrow. Because of course I started off with just this bit here, and um, with this board here, and then I've expanded it all along through the uh, through the year and a half that I've had it, or year, two years I've had it now I think. No, about a year and a bit um, that I've had it. Um, and I thought to myself, I can't base it off Heathrow because I haven't got enough aircraft and enough space for even an accurate um, interpretation of the airport. Um, I can't base it off Gatwick because half the airlines that are going to Gatwick haven't been released or aren't very widely available. For example, Monarch. Um, there are barely any Monarchs available. There are no Thomas Cook at all have ever been released. Um, the closest you can get to Thomas Cook are Condor. Uh, Thompson, they were released early last year, uh, but are now very rare. EasyJet, extremely rare, very hard to find anywhere, and also very expensive. And it would be even worse for Gatwick, is because um, 
Garrick have the largest EasyJet operations out there, so EasyJet's just a no-go. Ryanair, once again, the models are extremely rare and all of that. Um, but yeah, the first thing you want to think of is actually what you want to do with the airport. I know with the US airport, we're slightly harder to make my decision because, of course, UK airport, I wanted it to be fictional because I wanted to use the models that I had at the time uh, to my advantage um, and just have them operate where I want them to go. Um, but then with the US airport, because US, generally US airlines are more widely available, uh, of course, generally just a US operated um, or US company, so they're going to release more US aircraft. Um, so those are more, that's, that was more of a harder choice. I was debating San Francisco, but then I thought to myself, I might rather do a fictional airport because then I can have a mixture of airlines in because, of course, if you're um, if you're at San Francisco, you might not get a certain airline in. Um, and I just wanted to get as many airlines as I could in, uh, re realistically possible. Um, but yeah, that's the first step. You can either take the fictional route, which in my mind is the most easiest route to go, um, in a way, because you can literally buy any model and start a route there. Uh, as long as it's realistic and you don't have like a 737-300 operating a non-stop service from Los Angeles to um, Heathrow or somewhere, which is physically impossible, uh, you'll have to have about five, about two stops over, one from LA to New York, then New York to Shannon um, or somewhere like that, and then on to Heathrow, which is completely unrealistic. Uh, you have to make it within reason. Um, for example, the majority of my models, um, I will make sure they come to the UK first of all. So say if I'm looking at buying a, um, I don't know, let's just say, say if I'm looking to buy a Southwest um, for a U UK airport, I wouldn't, I'll go on Jet Photo, search up Southwest in the criteria and also put in um, uh, UK, uh, so that gives it more that I know that I'm going to be then I know that airline operates into the UK um, and really yeah take the fictional route which is easier just make sure the routes are realistic um, or take the real life route which is harder in a way but yeah, it's easier if that makes sense because you it's harder because you have to think what airlines and you have to subsidize what airlines what aircraft uh, of that airline you want in but then the routes is a lot easier um, so just research on whatever you want it does take a long time to plan um, and then also um, actually not also, that's the wrong word and yeah once you've got your fictional airport um, and what, what kind of airport you want then take into consideration what model, what aircraft size you want I wanted at least a 380 in because I had a free 380s and the 380 is a massive aircraft. So you have to sub you have to um, put this in consideration. Um, so say I've got two 380 stands. Well, you have to put can you have to put this into consideration. If you have a 380 on the runway, let me go there. If you have a 380 on the runway, there as you can tell, 380. And then if you have a 380 taxi now, you may only have one 380 stand, but you've still got to make sure that the 380 is completely clear of each other. I know this isn't the best with the ILS, of course, in the middle. But if I stick that the Singapore there and move on the Qantas a little bit, they will never conflict. There is no way that if this takes off this route here, that this is going to conflict the aircraft there. Of course, it's going to conflict up here. And probably closer so that like there. Of course they're gonna conflict but by, by that time um the Singapore would have been told to hurry the just hurry up and move out of the way otherwise it's gonna get here. Um but you gotta make sure there's enough clearance between the aircraft. Um this is also of course clearance between any obstructions for example I've got my ILS here so if I'm gonna want the 380 to taxi through it's got to avoid that at any point in the turn, it's got to avoid anything. Um, which I see in most model airports now, um, there's, most people don't have clearance, which is it, it's one of those things that really puts me off. It's like someone has, uh, just use this piece of grass here, it's like a corner stand. Uh, let's use it this way. So if we have a 380 there, then 
yes, they'll use their space efficiently, but then they'd have a self like oh, that's a bit too small. They have like a United seven five there, and really, that clearance is no way near enough. I know, of course, the three eighty wing is a lot higher than the seven five seven wing, but it's still that safety thing, um, and even things like I've even seen updates with people like dual three eighties, but like that. Like straight on like that, which you gotta think. What about if that Qantas wants to push back? Oh no, they've collided. Um, stuff like that. You gotta put that in consideration. Um, use your space efficiently. Um, first of all, that's part of the planning stage. That's part of like the build, like the um, the planning of the airport. Like, yeah, what's my drawing pad? Give me two secs, guys. Put a little pad. For example, if you guys haven't checked him out, check him out. He's called Jets 2014 and I've been talking to him about building a model airport of his own and adjusting it to make it seem realistic. Um, great guy, go check him out. Um, I've been talking to him on Kick. My Kick is Mr. Essex Gamer, so if you want any uh, direct questions and stuff, add me on that. Um, but yeah, I've been. I've made out. Oh, okay, this is kind of the first stage of planning. You make out like a rough design of what you want. He had, of course, if you haven't seen his airport, he's got his runway. He wanted cargo here, so I put cargo there. He's got gates here, but he also wanted a hangar. Uh, so I put the hangar up here with like an excess road bit, so excess like ground vehicles can get in between the gates and the hangar. Then it's got Terminal 2 and Terminal 1. That's the rough idea you want to get. You want to think You want to think about the layout. Um, I should have some things on my expansion on this. Give okay, that stable for the time being. Let's get both in here. Here we go. This one looking at. Um, yeah. Here. If you can't tell, there's my expansion. Um, that to that. Um, Delta terminal, hangar, cargo, um, whatever this is, um, heavies. Um, and really, look at that. This is I've got all my get your like get your dimensions of your um, get the dimensions of the space you got. I had 50 on each board, so I put 50 on the side, and my looks are clearly there, and then up here I should have the length, which is 187, uh, so I had that there, I think that's the right, um, I think that's the right length anyway, it's the main bold one, so I'm presuming it is, um, but I've got all measurements up here, um, I've got my gate size, so I'll move this up a bit again, I've got my gate sizes and stuff here, um, so I know exactly how much room I'm using, I'm making it as efficient as I can and I'm also making it as safe as I can um, so I didn't realise I could fit two of these stands in here I didn't, I had some excess, excess room um, so I didn't realise I could fit another stand here um, so of course I added two of those in, I've got two on those then if I keep going on I should get like another rough sketch that I wanted to do before. Like here. Like there. This is the exactly the same size. Um it's just I wanted to try something else. This one, I wanted to have a massive international terminal. Um two 380 stands, two 748 stands, because they're slightly thinner. Of course the 380 has a massive wing length. And um, then just a small regional stand, but then I thought, let me crack up another drawing. And of course, that's how I produced that one. I got a hell of a lot more stands out of that one than I did this one. Um, hence why I used stuck with the other one. Um, but you really just want to plan all your stuff out. So really, once you get that's this is just general airport stuff. And um, like, if that's if I combine all my boards together, I could have a layout like this and just have a massive airport. Um, it's just general stuff like that. That's the little test thing I did to make sure the 380 could fit in the stand. Then this, 
is if I flipped, I don't know what board it is, and I think it was the other one, it was like one of my really, really, really early updates or something, not early as such, but like, um, um, when I first mentioned building the second expansion, like the one I've got now, um, I had the actual, that board, because of course it was one board at the time, I didn't just say out like this, so I could fill off this off another board, um, you just want to plan it out. Um, in another video, I will give you all dimensions and stuff to um, probably in the main planning video, I will give you dimensions and stuff to like my gate sizes and whatever. Um, I could say it now, but this video is already 16 minutes long. I don't really want it to go on much longer. Um, but then when making the airport, once you've done all planning, um, of course, plan I'm going to help go into more detail in the next video, um, which will probably come out on Tuesday, just after the airport update. Um, I'm going to go after planning, but now, finally, quickly, I'm going to go through what materials and stuff you're going to need to paint your airport like mine. Um, so let me just get all this out of the way. First of all, this grey cover here was originally everywhere over the board literally everywhere um it started off gray um because i'll get the paint i use here i don't know if it's available in us or you probably have like the equivalent dulux you guys in the uk obviously know what dulux is it's a paint company hence why it's a part of paint um it's metal primer it generally goes on well metal really it stops it from rusting and stuff but then my dad suggested using it on my model airport when i first built this and it looks really good, it gives a really good apron and as you can see there, it looks really good as an apron, it's like a concrete kind of thing um, just a clean concrete and that looks really good, so I would definitely, I think it's about 20 um, 15, 20 quid for a tin uh, but this single tin has got me through this board and of course the expansion board so it does really use, well I think it has anyway um, so it does last um, I did about two layers of this on the board and just make sure it was covered and um, there are no spots of the wood coming through um, and if there was I'll just coat it over again uh, but you'd, if you're in the UK or in the US and you want to paint your airport definitely get some of this it's not cheap but it gets the job done and it gets the job done really nicely once it's, um, once it's on it takes about five six hours to dry uh, maybe longer um, but as soon as it's done, literally you can do anything you want. It's so easy to work with, it's unbelievable. Next one, runway. As you can see there, this side's a bit dirty. Uh, of course, I've been laying in bed, I've been putting my hot chocolate. I'm not really a fan of tea or coffee. Uh, I put my hot chocolate on here, so I've got a bit of a couple stains. Not stains as such, but like marks where I've had the hot drink on it. Um, this is a matte finish uh, runway. I didn't want to... At the time, I thought black. Here's, this is the spray pan I used. Got it from Halfords or Home Base, one of the two. Um, just general black spray paint. I didn't realize that black would be such a bad idea. Do not use black on a runway. It doesn't look realistic at all. Get like a dark, a very, very dark gray. Um, this is gray. Like that kind of color. You can. Like it, it's grey in the light, but then it's black in the dark, if that makes any sense at all. Um, but get a really dark grey, not get black, because black doesn't look very good. I know this is black, and it's come out alright, but this is matte black. I would definitely advise getting matte paint, because matte paint on a runway does look really awesome. Um, I, like, I really like the look of this, it's nice and smooth as well. Uh, that's when you want to make sure, when you're spraying. Um, I know I covered it. I know... It did happen on this, but of course I covered it over when I was doing the final touches. Um, I didn't completely cover the board in newspaper to cover up from the excess spray. Um, but when I was spraying it, as I was spraying it, of course the overspray from like all the, the particles that were just getting winded out. Um, though it was coming onto the board and giving it like a black finish. Um, so when I, was, when I peeled off the newspaper, of course I had the clean stuff, like the fresh grey. And then, of course, it went into, like, you could really notice, like, the black dots um, in it. Um, but, yeah, I would definitely advise getting a really dark 
uh, grey spray paint because spray paint is the easiest to use as long as you cover the runway section up um, well then it's going to look really cool uh, do a couple layers of that then this grass on this side and of course this board these two boards is flock um, I spray painted the the base of this is the base of the grass is a green a dark greeny spray paint um, and I just sprayed it over where I wanted grass and then got flock which I have here it's we've lost we kind of half lost the bag um, but here here's the bag of flock it doesn't look very good if the police came around my house uncovered like my, my little box where my bottle of stuff is and found that. Um, it looks a lot like a big anger. Um But that's flock. Literally, just once you've done that, once you've sprayed it, let it dry. Get some, get some like PVA or something like that. Coat where you want the grass and just get like a sieve and just flock it out. Uh, just get this and just cover it in that. It looks really nice, but then after a while, of course, the glue starts to go off in a way. If glue goes off, but if you know what I mean, the glue will kind of just stop. Uh, sticking and it starts all getting loose uh, like I don't think you'll be able to see it but like, I know in the expansion the clip I didn't really put enough glue in it I put more water and it just it was terrible um, the the grass just fell off everywhere but then the other alternative is let's let me get it out oh shit I'm only going to get half out because it just sprays the grass everywhere is this this is why using the expansion, I've got so much left over, it's ridiculous. Go about, ah, oh, why has one side got the bottle on it? The other has. I've got so much left over, it's ridiculous, I'm not even going to use this. Um, but this is a Glock, exactly the same as that, it's literally just pre flock stuff, uh, just on a mat. And yeah, you can use that, just do exactly the same, just stick it down. Um, just cover it out, coat it to size, whatever. Um, and that looks really cool. Also, with, it, with that one, of course, when the glue doesn't really work anymore, it starts to peel off, which is really annoying me because I've got spots in the expansion where it's just peeling off. And it's really aggravating. Um, but yeah, that's grass covered. Then, taxiways, it's just shoving this plastic back in this grass. <sighs> Taxiways. I used this kind of paint. It's just general get grass out of the way. Um, it's general, just general artist paint. You can go down to a hobby shop and pick this up anywhere. Of course, white. I got white, yellow, red, and well, yeah, white, yellow, red. Um, I got a couple of pots of white because so, white you need the most. Um, actually yellow and white kind of need the same um, but you just want to buy these things in preparation for building especially if you're painting because painting stuff does get expensive it does take time but it looks really good uh, that's my opinion anyway um, and finally with painting you want to get some masking tape now I would cut it now but literally with masking tape what I did is let me peel some off for you. If you go like that, this is how I get the line so sharp. I peel it like that. Got my. It's going to be a very good example, but. Let me just get the grass out of the way. What's this? Got my ruler. Literally, you can just get a straight line going down there. Then. Get your Stanley knife. This is how easy it is. Get your Stanley knife. Oh no, I've gone over. Fuck. Uh, get your Stanley knife and literally just go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right of the line. Come down, of course, using your ruler. Come down using your ruler. Like, try and get this out of the way. Like that. Boom, boom. Cut it out. Hit it, then just paint over the top of that. And that's how you get really sharp lines. Um, it's really the best way to do it um, and it works you can do curves you can do whatever you want with it and it's a really good way of doing it it makes the lines really sharp and it makes the airport look really cool um, 
So yeah, that's really it for um that's really it for this update for this part of um the expansion of like a not expansion of building your own model airport. Of course in the next one on Tuesday I'll make it immediately after I make the model um the airport update. Um I'm gonna cover measurements and stuff, which that comes in completely consider completely different term. Measurements and stuff, of course I'm gonna cover runways, how wide they should be, um like I'm gonna cover these these markings and stuff, how I use for them. Um the width of the taxiways, how far the whole short is away from the runway, um and different gate sizes, of course you can see they're the three eighty ones, slightly smaller, got your regionals there with the seven eight seven is um then you got the smaller seven five seven ones there. Um I'm gonna cover all that in the next video. Um then I'm gonna start covering well actually I'm not actually gonna cover the paint the paint um how to paint it and stuff because I haven't really got anything to paint because I'm not making the airport at the moment. I'm just doing this just to help you guys out. You guys are gonna know. Um and also this is just a final um I wanna thank you for sticking around this video for this long. Uh, it's about it's gonna end about thirty. Um but I've just this has been in my room for ages. It's just paper and I am really thinking of really covering part of this airport and just having like a temporary thing. So like just give a change of the, the usual because of course this airport has been this this part of the airport especially has been the same for the past year and a half since I've been making video model airport videos. This airport hasn't changed and I've been given two updates a week at, at some point of the same airport and to be honest I want to kind of change it um, of course I'm going to keep it here but I'm thinking about doing like a little weird thing where I just make a temporary airport out of this paper and just cover it across this um, and just do a couple weird updates like that and just make them into like a real life airport update instead of like a, a fantasy air, airport um, but yeah that's it I hope you enjoyed this video I know it's been long I hope you found it informative and I hope you see you in the next one after the airport update on Tuesday um, so yeah hope you have a good weekend I know Jeremy Jets 5.5 Jeremy Jets UK uh, Tom GG Tom J, uh, GJ um, Airport and Jimmy Jets 3242 all went up to Heathrow today. Um, I was going to go, but I went to Vichy last night and it was mental, had a sick time. Um, got home about 1 o'clock um, and I was just so tired, I couldn't drop, I couldn't be on the M25 uh, when I was that tired. Um, I really just didn't trust myself. First time driving on the motorway as well, it uh, wouldn't really help me. Um, so I didn't go up there. But go check out their channels, they're obviously going to have loads of videos on it. Um, I think Jeremy Jets UK got a Singapore A340-300, uh, the 50th one from ARD. Uh, so go check them out, it's going to have a model airport update soon, I presume. Um, but yeah, go check them out, go check out Jeremy Jets 2014. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, I know it's been long. Um, and I hope, thank you for sticking around. So yeah, see you on Tuesday, guys. Adios. Bye.